Hey guys, Justin here. So today we will be talking about solar stocks. And while you might think that investing in solar stocks is pretty straightforward, the truth is that there are many different solar stocks out there that have very different business models. So in this video, we will do three things. First, we will discuss the four main categories that solar stocks fall into. Then we will discuss which one of these four categories is the most promising from an investment standpoint. And third, I will narrow it down to a few select stocks that you can add to your portfolio today. Now, something I do need to talk about before we get into the video is that solar energy, specifically solar panels, are still in early stages of adoption by consumers. The benefit of this is that it is a great time to get in early before these solar companies experience the bulk of their growth. Now, the downside is that these stocks will be more volatile than larger, more established companies. So again, the whole goal of this video is to narrow it down to only the best solar stocks to invest in for the long term so that we as investors can continue to buy into these stocks, whether they go up or down. Because as an investor, you do not do yourself any favors when you buy a stock that you are unsure of and that you sell for a loss when it drops. So hopefully the research in this video will give you confidence in knowing that you are buying and holding the best solar stocks possible. So why should you add solar stocks to your portfolio? Well, the main reason you should add them to your portfolio is because of their projected growth. In fact, solar is expected to grow the fastest out of all the other renewable energy sources from now until 2050. And if we look at the historical growth rates of solar panel output in the US, we can see that large scale production jumped from 423,000 megawatt hours all the way up to 69 million megawatt hours by 2019, which is a 16,000% jump. And I don't know about you, but I would be totally okay with a 16,000% return on any of my investments. Also, if we look at residential solar output, we can see that it has also grown from 11.2 million megawatt hours in 2014, all the way up to 35 million megawatt hours by 2019, which is a 25% annualized return. So as you can see, this is an area that has grown tremendously over the past couple of years and looks to continue doing so for the foreseeable future. The other exciting thing about solar stocks is that solar only generated about 1.5% of electricity in the US in 2018. So there is still a lot of room for solar stocks to continue to grow. Okay, let's move on to the four categories that solar stocks can be placed in. The first category is solar panel makers. And this is pretty self-explanatory, so I won't go into too much detail here, but these are companies that design, manufacture, and sell the solar panels themselves. Two big solar panel stocks that fall into this category are First Solar and SunPower. But these are not the only two, and there are many different solar panel manufacturers in countries throughout the world. The next category for solar stocks are companies that operate as the solar panel installers. These are companies that work with both residential and business customers to sell, install, and maintain solar panel systems. As far as who is the largest solar panel installer in the US, a lot has changed over the years. In 2016, Tesla acquired the largest solar panel installer in the US at the time, Solar City. But from 2016 to now, Tesla has actually managed to decrease the number of solar panels they install each year. In fact, there were reports that Solar City was already in financial trouble before Tesla acquired them, which led to fraud accusations by Tesla investors against Elon Musk and Tesla's management for approving the deal while hiding Solar City's poor financials. So all you need to know is that Tesla is not the largest solar installer in the US anymore. The largest are now Sunrun and Vivint. However, it was announced just a couple of weeks ago that Sunrun is going to buy Vivint for roughly $1.5 billion, which would strengthen Sunrun's position as the market leader in this segment. The next category that solar stocks fall into is something called a yield co. Yield co's are companies that operate utility scale energy products that set up long term contracts to supply electricity to utility companies. Now, what's interesting about yield co's is that in recent years, utility companies have opted to not partner with yield co's and instead finance and build their own renewable energy projects themselves. This is because large utility companies like Next Era Energy, for example, have access to capital with very low interest rates. So instead of relying on yield co's as a sort of middleman, utility companies are instead choosing to take on the debt for these large energy projects themselves. 
So I would recommend going with a utility company that invests in renewable energy projects instead of investing in a standalone yield co. And I would especially recommend this option if you are older and nearing retirement, for example, and you are focusing on stocks with reliable dividend payments. Next era energy would probably be my top pick in this space, but other utilities like Southern Company, Duke Energy, and AES are not bad plays either. Okay, the last category I want to talk about is the most lucrative category in my opinion. And this category is for companies that manufacture specialized solar components. And this is where I think you find the best investment opportunity in solar. Two stocks in this space that I highly recommend and that I personally own are Solar Edge and Enphase. And if I had to only pick one of these stocks, it would be Solar Edge. But we will get more into that in a moment. Let's first explain what these two companies do. Solar Edge and Enphase both solve the same problem when it comes to solar panels, but they do it in slightly different ways, which both have their own pros and cons. The problem that Solar Edge and Enphase solve is the problem of how to convert DC current into AC current. And this is important because solar panels only output DC current, while homes, appliances, and the grid itself operate on AC current. Now, Sandia Laboratories created what is known as the solar inverter back in the year 2000, but this created another problem. The inverters, also called string inverters, were connected to many different solar panels. What this means is that if the output of one solar panel was lowered from, say, a cloud casting a shadow, then the output Output of all the other solar panels in that string would be lowered as well. Or in other words, the inverters were only as efficient as the slowest panel in the chain. The solution to this problem is to add individual inverters to each solar panel, which are called microinverters. And this is exactly what Enphase does. Now, Solar Edge does something slightly different, but with the same end result. Solar Edge installs optimizers onto each panel that allow each panel to operate independently. That way, if one panel is shaded or broken, the other panels will still be able to operate correctly at maximum efficiency. The biggest differences between Solar Edge and Enphase concern cost and scalability. String inverters are the cheapest option on the market right now, but microinverters and power optimizers are becoming more cost competitive each year. Between microinverters and power optimizers, microinverters are the more expensive option. But the advantages of microinverters is that you can easily expand your system if you need more power because each panel has its own inverter. So if you are looking for the cheapest option and you don't think you will need to expand your system in the future, Future, Solar Edge might be your best option. But if expandability is important to you, then Enphase might be a better solution. Now, I should add that not every house benefits from Enphase's and Solar Edge's products. Tesla has a section on its website that addresses this issue and states that engineers will select the best inverter based on your home's roof structure and sun exposure. Tesla chooses to use string inverters because they can be maintained without the need for installers to go on your roof. So not every solar panel system will benefit enough from Enphase and Solar Edge components to justify their additional cost. But in my opinion, I can see a lot of people opting to pay a little more to get a better performing system since solar panels are supposed to last upwards of 25 years. Also, when it comes to string inverters, they work the best on south-facing roofs with little to no shade, which is very specific and only applies to a certain percentage of households that I would argue is not that big. So I will link some good articles below if you're interested in learning more about the different types of inverters because it is really interesting, or at least it's interesting to me. I took many classes on renewable energy technology while in college and even wrote a research paper on methods to improve solar panel efficiencies. So I am passionate about this subject, but I won't bore you anymore and I will move on. From an investment perspective, you need to realize that solar panels are basically a commodity. And I guess it's not so much that the solar panels themselves are commodities, but rather the energy they produce is a commodity. What this means is that price plays the biggest deciding factor in who sells the most solar panels. So whoever has the lowest price solar panels will typically win regardless of the brand. Now, obviously there are some other considerations here, such as quality and warranty periods, but all else being equal, the lowest 
lowest price panels will always win. Now what this means is that as investors, we want to stay away from solar panel manufacturers. That's because these are the solar companies that will have the lowest margins and the most competition. Now, I do not own any solar panel manufacturers in my portfolio except for Tesla, if you can even really consider Tesla a solar panel manufacturer at this point. But the one I would recommend if I had to pick a solar panel manufacturer would be First Solar. This is because First Solar has a proprietary thin film solar panel that performs better than competing ones made out of silicon. So First Solar will most likely be able to maintain higher margins than other solar panel manufacturers. And therefore, they would be the ones that I would recommend in this category. Now, the same problem that affects solar panel manufacturers also affects solar panel installers. And that is that it is very difficult to stand out from the competition. Also, solar panel installers tend to have lower margins since they don't have any proprietary technology. This leaves solar panel component makers like Enphase and SolarEdge the most promising investment options. This is because both SolarEdge and Enphase command over 30% gross profit margins on their power optimizers and microinverters and have very low operating costs since they are not actually installing the panels themselves. And both companies have impressive plans to continue growing for the foreseeable future as well. Enphase released a new set of initiatives recently that they say will help grow the company by 400% by 2022. These initiatives include a renewed focus on European markets, a new battery system called InCharge, a microinverter aimed at commercial applications, and an all-in-one solar plus storage system aimed at low-income households in Asia. SolarEdge is also a very well-run company with innovative technology and has new products of its own that it will look towards to generate growth. One of those products is the Energy Hub Inverter that can redirect excess DC current directly into a battery for later use. It can also charge your car or your generator and can be used with as many batteries as your home may require. Also, it gives users the ability to control everything via a mobile app. Now, the ability to redirect excess DC current to a car or a battery is important because electric cars and batteries are charged using DC power. So you would gain some efficiency back by not having to convert the energy from DC to AC and then back to DC. So this is something that seems small, but it's something that will help Solar Edge gain an edge, get it? over in phase. In fact, Solar Edge commanded 60% of the US residential inverter market at the end of 2019, and its products most likely played a big hand in that. So let's run through my top solar picks one more time based on each category. For solar panel manufacturers, I recommend First Solar. Again, this is because of their proprietary thin film solar panels that can operate at much higher efficiencies than silicon panels can. For solar panel installers, I recommend Sunrun. This is because after Sunrun closes the deal to buy the vent, I think they will only strengthen their position as the top solar installer in the US. And this will allow them to continue growing for quite some time. Now, when it comes to yield co's and utility companies, I prefer utility company Next Era Energy, who operates its own yield co, Next Era Energy Partners, ticker symbol NEP. This is different from Next Era Energy, which has ticker symbol NEE. So if you want to buy the yield co, you can simply buy NEP, knowing that it is partnered with and backed by the $140 billion utility company NEE. Also, NEP has a dividend of 3.66% compared to a 1.95% dividend for NEE. So you are gonna get a much bigger dividend by going with NEP instead of NEE. So again, NEP is a great stock for older investors who are mainly focused on dividend payments. And for the last category, the solar panel component manufacturers, I think either SolarEdge or Enphase are great options here. They are very similar companies with very similar products and similar margins. So I think it comes down to who can execute better at the end of the day. But I will say that SolarEdge probably has a slight advantage over Enphase because of one big thing and that is price. Remember, energy is a commodity, so price is going to play a bigger role in this space than for other market segments. And SolarEdge does provide a very similar solution to Enphase, but at a much lower price. 
But again, I don't think you can go wrong buying either of these companies as long-term investments, and I do own both of them in my own portfolio. So I hope this video was really helpful to you guys and helped you understand more about these solar energy stocks, because I do think there is huge potential in this space over the next couple of decades, and I don't want you guys to miss out. So if you did enjoy this video, feel free to click on some of my other videos on the screen right now. Also hit that subscribe button if you are not already subscribed. And with that, guys, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.